So, so basically, yeah. uh, today I was just going to be talking a little bit about um, how, obviously, with um, the project we launched last summer, which is called My Energy Game. Um, I'll drop you here, guys, the um, the website, and you know you can have a look at it. I don't want to bore you too much with it. There you are. You, you can have. Oh, you thanks. can check your. So so basically, <clears throat> with this project, um, what we want to do is to kind of like um, integrate in the weekly timetable the idea of working on your emotions and the idea of working on your energy. So as well as we go into the gym and we go into the lecture theater, and of course we go on the grass to do training sessions, I think we believe that with the timetable, so I don't know, this morning is a lot or this afternoon is a lot, we should be working on our emotions, but in a much deeper way and in a much kind of like interactive way than just having a psychologist that does a workshop or does a webinar or is there in case we need to tap into that person because we are feeling low. So I think it should be something that is actually working in a weekly basis. And it's something that you do regardless of your emotional state of that week. Um, so then it's, it's going to become more normalized. Um, so that's the idea. And, and we've already started doing some webinars and workshops with the players. And I think they all like it and they all get excited because they're starting to understand that it's actually very, very important to work on your emotions because I am a true believer that the happier you are, the more you're going to perform and the more chances you have to, to kind of like develop yourself as well and to improve. So that's what we've been working on. That's kind of like my uh, platform for the next five, 10 years. Make sure that in football we humanize the game and we do have a chance then to speak out and, and to work on our emotions in a very, very genuine, normal way. Um, I will tell, I'll give you an example of what we do so you can see that how, that, how it works. So, for example, there's something called Indaba. So, if you want to have a look at that, Indaba is a word uh, from the African tribe, the Zulus. And basically what they do, um, when they have a problem and when there is something to be solved within the tribe, rather than fight and say, come on, let's go for a duel and let's see, you know, the winner decides and the stronger, um, you know, is the one who has the last say. Actually, they sit in a circle and, and they discuss the problem and they go one by one and everyone has to say something. And when someone is saying something, the rest of us cannot say anything. And so we, we start working on empathy, compassion, and listening. And, and by something as simple as that, with that circle, you actually achieve something, which is what one of the pillars of, of my beliefs, that in a team environment, to create more team cohesion, and to create a better understanding between the members of the team, whether it's the staff or players, we all need to create an environment in which everyone feels free to say what they want and what they think and what they feel. And the minute you've got, you've got that honesty and that trust and that belief, then everyone will feel in a, empowered and that empowerment will make everyone feel more confident and that confidence will make everyone feel more comfortable and happier and that happiness and that kind of like not comfortable in a way that you don't want to um, face challenges and you want to be in your comfort zone, comfortable in a way that you feel appreciated and you feel that you are in a place where what you say and you think matters to the rest of us, right? which is a different degree of uh, being comfortable, if you like. And so... Yeah, that's what we do. That's one of the techniques uh, used um, in my coaching methodology, which is using Indaba, make, making circles. And you can, and actually, sometimes in, in some of the teams I've been, for example, with uh, the under 23s in MK Dons, it was so cool because it came to a point where I wouldn't call for Indabas. It would be the captain or the players that would come to me and say, hey, Edu, I think we, we need an Indaba. I think things, you know, whether it's for to solve a problem or actually to reinforce a good behavior. So they don't need to be used or seen only as a 
as a problem solving mechanism. And so, yeah, that was, so, and so basically that's what I'm trying to kind of like present to you today to then generate a little bit of argument and debate and Q and A that there is in coaching, there is much more than just observing the tactics, the technicalities and the setting up of your team. There is also how to create an environment, how to create an energy around the place that empowers everyone to feel free to say what they think and what they feel. And by doing that, everyone, I believe, and I've tried, and I, in my teams at least, I feel that it has worked. And the feedback given by the staff and the players has always been that it has worked as well. Um, by doing this, you generate a completely different dynamic that ultimately helps the process, but also helps the outcomes. Because obviously, at the end of the day, we are also depending on where you work, of course, whether it's grassroots or whether it's elite. But if you are in the elite and it's a three-point game and it's a three-point system and you have to win every weekend, um, ultimately, you also want to do something which is going to enhance your performance. And this is not just a wishy-washy thing that, you know, is really cool to do and it, and it gives you, you know, a kind of like a good credential as a human being, which is lovely. And obviously, I'm a great believer of that. But it's also... I'm also a professional of this um, industry. I also work, obviously, to win games when I'm, when I'm in the lead. Otherwise, I lose my job. And, and so enhancing performance is very important. And I'm a great believer that these things do enhance performance. And I think that's been the problem at times in football. Uh, I talk to other people in cricket, in rugby, in volleyball, in handball, and they seem more switched on in, 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 in a accepting the importance of, of empathy, the importance of compassion, the importance of integrating emotional agility, emotional abilities within their coaching. Um, in football, at times it's been very much like, oh, no, 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 if we do that, you know, that's kind of like, that's not cool. That's not us. You know what I mean? In, in here in the changing room is like, you know, wh whoever barks more of us is going to be, you know, more switched on and, you know, and, and that's going to contribute to the win. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a believer of that. I think we are all humans that do need to feel appreciated and loved. And, and, and again, it's not creating a, an environment of let's all feel comfortable and we are all nice to each other for the, for the argument of just being nice to each other. It's an environment in where, in where let's create an environment where we are honest and where we can be honest and where we know that it's worthy being honest. Because by being honest and by being true and by being authentic, things are going to change for the better. And we are going to listen to each other. Because sometimes that is the problem in, in team dynamics and in environments. The people are at, at some point, they go like, why? Why, you know, why voicing my opinion if this is not going to change? Why saying anything about the um, coaching strategies or if the gaffer is not going to listen to me? Or if I do say something, actually, it's going to go against me. Because, you know, that person is going to start thinking, well, this guy's quite busy by saying those things. I'm the one in charge. And so, so I think you need to work your, your, your talk. I think it's important by doing these things, like the example of Dindaba, you are really, really, as a leader, getting yourself in a position of vulnerability. And I think vulnerability is showing a strength, which is probably what in football at times we haven't done. Sometimes in football, we've thought that by covering certain fears, by not admitting certain things, by not showing certain degree of honesty in our approach, will be seen as strong, powerful, and the ones in charge. And I think, actually, the minute you are capable as a leader to open up and be an indaba and be told by your players, this needs to change, this could be better, this is amazing and having that constructive feedback and then implementing it in a way that really helps the team is much more powerful than anything. Uh, but of course, you have, as a leader and as a coach, you have to be prepared to step in and, and show that degree of vulnerability to your staff and players. Um, but again, for me, I would say, you know, just to finish off a little bit and then allow some Q&A and so on, I would say that it's about, how can I say, it's about what type of leader you want to be. And for me, it's a very, 
very obviously personal opinion. So I'm not saying that, by the way, I'm not saying that what I'm saying is right or wrong. Uh, I'm just obviously using this opportunity given um, to just express my opinions, which are just opinions. Um, serving leaders are probably going to be effect, more effective in football in the future. Um, because the way we educate players now in academy level and the way our children are, are educated in schools these days, in, in most of our nations, um, we educate them to be responsible in charge, question why they do things. And so players are the same. So I think and a changing room in which you are just going to go there as a leader and say, we do this, that's it, is not going to work. However, there is moments, of course, where a leader has to say, listen, this is what it is, and I have to make a call and I have to make a decision, but not as a trait of that happening every day. Um, I think as a trait is more about being a, an assertive, but a good listener, um, so you can then make sure that um, you cover the needs of your staff and your players which is for me very, very important. And that's, I think, the job of a true leader.